welcome back to my channel. Um, I assure you that I own more than these two different colored shirts, but quite honestly, they are the most comfortable things ever. I just happened to pick them up at Walmart. I think it was last year and I just live in these things. So we're just going to roll with it. I want to talk to you about my November favorites. I have a ton of stuff. I don't know what it was about November, but I just really found a lot of new discoveries in my collection that I just gravitated towards over and over again. So let's go ahead and talk about them. So the first thing I have are two eyeshadow palettes that have just like stolen my heart and I've talked about them in previous favorites this year, but I was playing a lot with my Too Faced chocolate bar in the month of November. This is a palette that I have owned for a long time, but I've never really gotten hooked on. I got real hooked on it in the month of November. Um, today I'm wearing a few colors. I've got these two on. I have this color um, all over my eye. Like I just... Don't know why I like this so much because it's really a neutrals palette, but I just, it's an easy go-to. I've really been pulling it out on the weekends that I've been doing my non-Project 10 pan items, and it's just a really fabulous palette. I'm really happy to have discovered it and found a lot of use for it in the past, I'd say like month and a half. I also, as in previous months, have been obsessed with my Lorac Pro palette. I have gone back and forth about panning this, doing like a year long project pan with it. And I just don't think I want to because the deeper colors on this palette are so pigmented and so packed into those pans. I don't think I'd be able to do this um, 12 months straight, but I have made a lot of progress on like these four shades over here. Plus I played around with Garnet, Pewter, and Deep Purple this month as like outer crease shades and I really, really liked them. This palette is just, to me, if you were only gonna own one palette and you wanted a good variety, you wanted color, but you also wanted neutrals, I would probably pick this. It's just, it's just creamy and it got me hooked on uh, the rock shadows and I just really like this one. It's one of my favorite lock palettes that I own. I do think I have in my collection, it's predominantly Too Faced and the rock eyeshadows and these two palettes are by far, I think the bread, but the bread and butter of each one of the lines. I just really, really like them. And I've been getting so much use, especially out of this one during the entire year, but especially in the past like month and a half. Other eye favorite that I have is the L'Oreal Voluminous Feline Mascara. I got this a while ago. I wanted to say like the tail end of August and then it got like lost in a bag somewhere and I came back across it and I've just fallen in love with it. I don't know if I like it so much because it's dried out to like that perfect level but the wand is a little bit different on here. You have these little like nooks and crannies where product can get dispersed and I just like the way it makes my lashes long. It doesn't like make them clumpy or anything like that. So I'm a big fan of this. I also had purchased the mascara or I've also purchased the eyeliner from this little like launch that happened, but I haven't played enough with it to know if I love it or not. Uh, I have two primers. I, since I finished up my other uh, eye primer, have pulled out this random one that I have. It's Disney Cinderella Past Midnight Eyeshadow Primer. This is in one of like the Walgreens collections and I totally got it because of the pretty packaging. And it reminds me exactly of the Wet n Wild Fergie formula. It is the same consistency, the same level of thickness, but also stickiness. And I'm really, really liking it. I am once again delaying the use of my Lorac eyeshadow primer until I finish this up. And then I basically am down to that one eyeshadow primer. So I'm a big fan of this. It is a nice consistency. I don't think you can still get this, but I imagine that whenever they produce those princess lines or like Disney themed lines, the products don't really change, just the packaging does. So if you can find it then, I'd grab it. I'm sure it's very similar, but this is awesome. I also have been pulling out on the weekends to play with the Hard Candy Sheer Envy Primer Ultra Light Formulation. This stuff is bomb. It is a very thin type of texture. It's similar in texture to the Smashbox Photo Finish, but it is so quickly absorbed into my skin that I don't mind. Like I'm not annoyed by the texture the way I am with the Smashbox. It leaves your skin feeling really matte and just like ready to have a smooth foundation put over it. So I'm a big fan of this. I also wanted to, I've been wanting to try the, um, 
I think it's like their finishing spray or their primer spray, one of their sprays that they have, but I'm trying to resist until I go through other things. But this is a really just nice discovery from Hard Candy. I've had a lot of misses from that line, so it's nice to find something that I actually like from there. Additionally, I discovered in my collection the Tarte Amazonian Clay 12 Hour Full Coverage Foundation in the shade Fair. It's what I have on my face today. Um, this is 100% full coverage. It is a lot more coverage than I necessarily normally go for but I've been liking it because my skin and my chin area has been breaking out and you can't see it right now because of this uh, it really is nice it's like a whipped texture almost it is on the thicker side but it doesn't feel thick when it's on your face I've had this again for a long time but hadn't really had the desire for the coverage but now that I've pulled it out and I'm using it I'm a really big fan of it also have a new lip love. I have rediscovered my Mali lip magnifier lip color and golden star. It's what I have on my lips today. This is just such a nice crayon. It, it goes on and feels like a gloss, but it doesn't have that sticky texture. It just feels really smooth on your lips. Um, I've sharpened this a few times. I really do like it. I am trying to stay on top of panning my lipstick that I have in my Project 10 pan, but I've been wanting to come to this more and more. It just goes really well with a lot of the sort of darker or more dramatic looks like what I have on today that I've been liking lately. And this just is a nice complimentary lip product that doesn't dry out your lips, especially this time of year when it's super dry out, at least up here in the Northeast. So I'm a huge fan of this. And then the last like makeup -y item that I have before we move on to other things is a highlighter. I have recently pulled out my Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Champagne Gold. It looks like this. This was in a holiday kit I think three years ago they had three like a trio of these and I just absolutely love this type of highlighter. It is I love like liquid. I love the applicator it comes with. It makes it super easy to apply. And this was the last color that I was drawn towards. I love the golden look on my cheeks. I think it works really well with my hair and my skin tone. And I am quickly going through this. Uh, I just been pulling this out every single day and wanting to use it. Uh, I'm like that with highlighters. I tend to find one and then I use the heck out of it until it's either gone or I get so sick of it that I can't even look at it anymore. And I think I might be end up, end up panning this because I am so obsessed with it right now. All right, moving on to beauty tools. Like I said, a lot of favorites this month. Um, I finally pulled out my Japanese makeup brush cleanser in the citrus scent. This is on the pricier side, much pricier than my e.l.f. daily brush cleanser. But one, I like the scent of it. I do like the citrusy scent. And two, I like how it's a very fine mist. So I can literally spray it, wipe my brush off, and then it's essentially still dry. I could actually take a new like eyeshadow shade and still work with it. That's, I think, the biggest selling point for this is when I use the daily brush cleanser, from e.l.f., it, it makes them wet. I can't immediately like go apply or use it again until like the next day. This I can absolutely multitask with brushes, the same brush over and over again and just keep spraying it with this. So I do like that part of it. Will I still buy it? I don't know, I think I actually might. It depends on um, if Amazon runs any kind of specials like they were when I first picked this up. So I wanna say this stuff is like $11. I mean, you get almost four and a half ounces, which compared to the e.l.f. daily brush cleanser, like I think that they're pretty similar in price once I weigh out how quickly I go through each one of them. But I'm a big fan of this. If you're on the market for something like this, go ahead and try it. Um, I also have some tools. I have three tools, four tools in fact. Um, the first is from my recent e.l.f. haul. This is the e.l.f. stipple brush. I absolutely love this because of the like length of the, I don't know, is this the, the fennel and the handle? I don't know what the right terms are for brushes, but I just really like the length of this because it's just the right amount where I can sort of really easily pack it on and then like blend it out efficiently. I also like the circumference of the stippling. It's just the right amount for applying a cheap product. I am still working through my balm how about them apples lip and cheek palette and I just think it's really easy for putting blush on so I'm a big fan of this and it's easily replaced my other elf stipple brushes I also have been loving my Luxie Tapered Blending 229 brush this came in a kit in BoxyCharm I think there were three or four like blending brushes this has been awesome for taking like harsh lines like this and blending them out i just really like this brush i've been liking lexi brushes a lot as well i've just been discovering them more and more uh, as i've been getting them in my subscription services the last brush that i've had is like one of the first brushes i ever purchased from elf it's the professional defining eye brush it looks like this 
For the longest time, this just like sat in my collection and didn't get used. And then I pulled it out one day because in my Lorac shadows, I've been kind of trying to get to the edges of where I have pan product. And this is perfect for that, but it's also perfect for packing shadow onto the lid area and not having it hit your crease. It just is really nice and precise. And I think this is like a dollar brush and it's been a game changer for me for, I'd say like the past two months, I just keep forgetting to talk about it in these favorites videos. I also have my Real Techniques uh, Blending Eye Sponge, I think is what they call it. Uh, this, hands down, has become my holy grail. I like it better than the Beauty Blender one. I like it better than the um, Ulta brand one. This is a lot bigger than both of those other two brands I just mentioned, but this sort of flat um, angle and then this flat area up top just make it so easy to blend in and push concealer into my fine line so that way they get filled and I don't have the sinking of concealer uh, with that, those like nasty fine lines that I have. So this has been awesome. I absolutely love it. I also use it to blend out my highlighter. I'll take my Becca uh, applicator and I'll just swipe it on and then I'll actually pat this out along my cheekbones and it just works marvelously. It is really soft, really squishy. This is bigger because I recently just used it so it's been saturated with water and then squeezed out with a face cloth. So big fan of this, highly recommend it. It's been, again, a game changer for my makeup game. All right, now I have four sort of not makeup items, but still I think a part of these regular favorites. First is the shampoo. It's the Ginger Scalp Care from The Body Shop. I picked this up because I have had really dry scalp in the fall months, like to the point where it's just not been good how much itching I've been doing. And my hairdresser told me a few years ago when I was religiously using, um, head and shoulders that's really not good for your hair it kind of strips your hair and it, it's like it's okay to use once in a while but I was looking for something that I could use on a more frequent basis that wouldn't strip my hair and I came across this on the body shops website and it had really good reviews the only con I have with this is that it's a very thin shampoo so I feel like I have to use a lot of it and I really have to work it into my scalp it doesn't lather as easily as I'd like it to you know I've all, probably only used it like three times but I'm already down to here on it which I don't know I got it on sale I think it was only like seven or eight dollars for a container of this size and if it lasts me throughout the fall and winter I will keep rebuying it I don't normally have a dry scalp in the spring and summer months but it is working uh, I also have a body lotion favorite. It's my Egg Mellow Body Butter. Oh my God, this stuff is magical. I really didn't want to keep it because it's expensive and I have so many other lotions, but one, I love the scent. I described it in my recent haul video, which I know probably didn't sound like the greatest scent, but if you can get a sample of this or you can smell it at the store, I feel like you would absolutely love it the way I do. The real reason why I'm keeping it though is because it is a lightweight body cream, but it is so moisturizing. I put it on at night after a shower. The next like night, I still don't have dry skin. I have to shower though, because I went to the gym and I'm sweaty, but my skin still feels quenched, which is very rare for me these days to find a body lotion that does that. So well worth the money. I'm happy I have it. It's not going back to the store. It's a keeper. Uh, and I just really, really enjoy it. And the smell of it's awesome. Um, I also have a face product that I've been loving. It's the Glam Glow Thirsty Cleanse Daily Hydrating Cleanser. I have a sample of this and then I have another sample in like a bigger deluxe size. I really like this cleanser. It's one of those ones you put on your face when it's dry and then you add water and you know scrub it and it kind of gives you that cleansed effect, but it's also super moisturizing. There was one night where I put this on and I washed my face and I had to do something else and I forgot to go back and put my moisturizer back on and my face didn't feel dry. It wasn't necessarily, I couldn't go without moisturizer, but it wasn't like dry, cracking, like my face feels dehydrated. It really does help. If you have dry skin, I feel like this would be really awesome for you to breathe some moisturization back into your face. This is just really, really awesome and I'm a big fan of it. The last favorite that I have is a candle favorite. It is from Bath & Body Works. It's the Marshmallow Pumpkin Latte Candle. Oh boy. I delayed, delayed, and delayed burning this. I kept like being like, oh, I'll burn that one later. I'll grab something else. And I wish I had it. I have seen a lot of mixed reviews about this candle, which is why I think I was so hesitant to burn it. I've heard that it smells like sour milk. I've heard that it um, doesn't burn really great. It has a really like funky scent. Maybe I lucked out, maybe I got a weird nose, but this is magical. It's like 
it's almost like what I imagine um, foam. I don't drink lattes. I don't drink coffee. I'm just naturally energized. And this to me is what like cream and foam smells like on top of a coffee or a latte or like whipped cream basically. Um, I just love it. It's in a bedroom scent. I am kicking myself that I did not try this out sooner because I definitely would have gone back and bought another one. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that they have some at the semi-annual sale and I can grab a couple of them because I don't think it's sold very well. I don't think people love this scent, so I don't imagine it will come back next year. So I'd love to get my hands on some before it's gone forever because it is just awesome and magical and I love it in my bedroom. It has a super strong scent throw. I haven't really experienced any sooting. I've not had any burning problems. I don't know what it is, but this is just a magical candle and I am loving it right now. All right, guys, that was a ton of stuff. Literally, I don't know what happened in the month of November, but I just was loving things and trying things out, and I was so excited to share them with you. If you've been loving anything this month, let me know in the comments below, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video real soon. Bye.